Do you remember that movie Limitless where you take this pill and all of a sudden after you take it you're Superman and you can accomplish anything that you want in life? In that movie Bradley Cooper starts off as this struggling author who was broke and then he takes that pill, he develops a four digit IQ as he describes it in the movie and then he becomes a super millionaire and just does whatever he wants. Now I was really intrigued by that movie because I was always curious if that was actually, uh, that actually existed, if that was actually possible. And with today's science, obviously that's not possible at all. It's not, I don't think we're anywhere close to it. But it really intrigued me because it made me ask the question, okay, well why is behavior change so hard? Why did people connect with that movie so much to the point where they say, okay, well changing my life is so difficult, I need to have this pill to be able to actually get me from point A to point B with what I want in life. Here's the thing, behavior change is really, really difficult. But amazingly enough, modern science can really explain actually how, or the science of psychology more specifically, how to actually get from point A to point B, get what you want to accomplish in life, to lose all that body fat, to uh, become more successful with women, to, become, uh, to make more money. Those things are possible, you just are looking at it from the wrong angle, okay? And I'm going to explain to you in this presentation why. If you figure out this analogy that I'm going to explain in this uh, little whiteboard presentation that's coming up here about the elephant and the rider analogy, if you're able to figure this out, you pretty much will crack the code on actually being able to accomplish anything you want. I'm not being hyperbolic here. This is all scientifically proven stuff, or at least as much as the limits of science can, can explain these things. And a lot of titans in the field of psychology came up with this concept, more specifically Dr. Jonathan Haidt. Um, so just sit back, relax, watch this. If you're a coach especially, I think this can be a huge game changer for getting your clients results. It's helped a lot for me. Uh, it's really been a game changer for transforming my own life um, and, and scaling my own business and, and all these other great things the past few months. So. I highly suggest that you sit down and watch this and take notes. It, it might be able to change your life. I don't want to. I don't want to be hyperbolic here, but it's uh, it's it's very very powerful. So enjoy. What's up? How you doing? I'm going to explain to you on this whiteboard today an analogy that's going to freaking change your life. Okay? It basically explains. Basically, it goes down to the crux of human behavior from a psychological standpoint, from a scientific standpoint, and actually explains to you kind of, and, and paints a picture in your mind of how to actually change your life or change anything that you're trying to change within your life, right? So if you want to become more fit, if you want to become better in your dating life, if you want to have a better, more successful business, what is the thing that actually drives you from point A to point B? Because let's be honest here, making a giant change in your life is freaking hard, okay? It's really, really hard. So uh, basically the past, I would say, I don't know, nine months now that I've just been traveling and backpacking through Asia. Well, I haven't really been backpacking, but <laughs> I've just been kind of traveling around through Asia uh, as, as a digital nomad, so to speak. Um, I've really been trying to tackle these questions because I've had a lot of time to think and study upon this stuff and what actually works, okay? And these things have just done wonders for my clients, uh, for my fitness clients. Now I'm uh, going more into the realm of, of men's uh, self-development, men's self-improvement, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, their dating lives. So um, I'm just gonna explain to you how all this stuff works. And a lot of this stuff isn't just something I came up with. Um, these come from fantastic books, they come from uh, you know, clinical psychologists, PhDs in psychology, and they explain basically that this is actually how human uh, behavior change works, okay? Now, first of all, where do people mostly screw up before they even start? They blame themselves for not being able to change, okay? They say, oh, I don't have what it takes. I'm not tough enough. I'm not disciplined enough. I don't have enough willpower, right? When you start off from that standpoint, it's actually scientifically false, okay? To say that, oh, I'm just, I'm just too lazy and therefore that's the reason that uh, I don't see any change, right? It makes sense logically when you think about it logically, but here's the thing, as human beings, we are not logical creatures, not as much as you think. We're more logical than most uh, animals in the animal kingdom, but we're still more emotional creatures than we are logical. And I'm going to explain that in depth and uh, in this kind of small presentation here, and it's going to really make sense for you in the end, okay? So first off, what I want to explain before I go forward, a lot of the ideas that I have in this is from this book called Switch by Chip and Dan Heath. It is a fantastic book. You absolutely need to read it. A lot of the ideas that come from this book 
um, are uh, come from another book called The Happiness Hypothesis by Dr. Jonathan Haidt, where essentially they explain how behavior change works. Okay, so let's first talk about how they explain behavior change, a great analogy that they talk about in the behavior change called the elephant and the rider. Um, I'm going to explain what that is first, and then I'm going to explain my take on it, um, kind of the way that it, it's helped me and my clients uh, really paint a picture of how to change their lives, okay? <clears throat> so here's the elephant and the rider analogy in a nutshell, okay? So first off, human beings, we have two different minds, just to, just to keep it simple, okay? So here's our brain. Oh, lost my pen cap. Whoops. Here's our brain. Imagine the brain as a circle because I'm not really good at drawing, as you'll see in the rest of this presentation here, <laughs> okay? So you have two different parts of your brain. You have the emotional side of your brain and the logical side of your brain, okay? Now here's the thing. The emotional part is the part where, let's say you're dieting and you're just like, I want to really eat food, I'm starving, I wanna eat food, I wanna eat junk food, I hate dieting, I wanna eat food, right? Then the logical part is saying, no, 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 no. You started this diet, you paid a trainer, you're not allowed to eat food, okay? <laughs> you're not allowed to eat yummy food, I should say. Stick to the plan. And then these two, are always in this perpetual power struggle, right? Let's say you're trying to start a successful business. You know that you should be working probably on the weekends. Logically, you know that you need to put in some more hours to actually make your dreams come true. But emotionally, you don't want to. You're like, hey, I feel like I'm missing out. My friends are doing all of these fun stuff on the weekend. I don't wanna miss out. And here's the thing. The reality is over time, the emotional mind always wins. And here's why. There's this common misconception that we think, again, because we're egotistical, narcissistic creatures at heart, because the, we only ever view the world through our own lens, right? It's, it's really hard to uh, analyze how your brain works because you're, you're viewing it through your own brain, right? So we like to think that we're more logical and we have more, uh, we have more control over our actions, but we don't. And here's the reason why. Right? People think that, well actually, I should say this. People think, in general, that we're mostly logical creatures that every once in a while our emotions take us over, okay? That could not be further from the truth. So what is the truth then? Is it, is it a 50-50 split? Well, we're 50% logical, 50% emotional, no. According to Dr. Jonathan Haidt, who I referenced earlier, who is a titan in the field of psychology and uh, psychology of behavior change, I should say, uh, we're actually 95% emotional, 5% logical. Yeah, that's pretty crazy if you think about it, right? 95% emotional, 5% logical. So what ends up being the issue when it comes to behavior changes, a lot of people just have this complete misunderstanding that they think that they're mostly, uh, they're, they're mostly logical, when in fact they're mostly emotional. So they try to, uh, they try to solve their problems and, and trying to change from a logical standpoint, right? But if only 5% of your mind, more specifically your forebrain, your, your prefrontal cortex, uh, that if, if you're mostly, if your logical mind is that tiny in, in comparison to the rest of your mind, the 95%, the subconscious, the unconscious, right? You cannot induce behavior change just using this 5%, okay? And this is 5% for, uh, it's just as a general rule, but it's just how our brains work, right? And this goes for both men and for, and for women. We can speculate all day if uh, women are more emotional. I would say that they are, that's not a bad thing. I think that's actually a good thing because they tend to be more empathetic than most men. But even so, let's say like for women, okay, they're you know 6% emotional, 94% logical, and men might be like 4%, uh, uh, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like the, the difference is very negligible, okay? We're human beings at the end of the day, despite the differences in gender, our brains aren't 
like drastically different, right? They're more similar than they are different. So we're still, even men, we're still more emotionally driven than we are logically driven, okay? So here's how Dr. Jonathan Haidt really likes to explain this analogy to really hit this point home, okay? So imagine that there is a, uh, an elephant and a rider, okay? So there's this massive elephant and then there's this, uh, oh, apologies. Uh, my mic almost slipped out. <laughs> so imagine that there is a massive elephant and a rider who's operating the elephant, okay? Now here in Southeast Asia, we know that riding elephants is bad for them, so don't do that, but you know, bear with me here with this analogy, okay? So we're gonna draw a nice little elephant here. Now excuse me for having terrible uh, you know, drawing skills. I think I already messed this up. Here's an ear. Do elephants have a neck? I don't know if they have a neck. All right, here's the body of the elephant, okay? All right, this is the worst elephant of all time. But this isn't a drawing lesson after all. Let's give him a little smile. Look at him, adorable. Um, okay, so here's the elephant and then here's a rider, right? Now, one of these is your emotional mind. The other is your logical mind. Now, like I explained earlier, you know, if, if you're paying attention, you'll know which one is the emotional mind. The emotional mind is the elephant. It's a lot bigger than the rider, okay? Now, the rider can steer the elephant wherever he tells the elephant to go if the elephant is willing to go there, if it's well-trained, right? But here's the problem. If the elephant doesn't want to go in a certain direction, you as the logical mind, the logical rider, it doesn't matter how much you try to steer it, doesn't matter how much you try to crack the whip, the elephant is not going in that direction. And that is where most people screw up when it comes to behavior change, right? They try to appeal to the rider, right? The 5% of your mind where you're just like, well, do you wanna be successful? Do you wanna be successful with women? Do you wanna be fit? Do you wanna make a lot of money? The writers, yeah, like, hell yeah, I wanna make a lot of money. I want to be successful with women. I wanna be fit. I wanna feel good about myself. That sounds great. But then the elephant, the emotional elephant, the one that's actually the one that's getting you from point A to point B, he actually might say like, hey, yeah, that's great. But he's scared. He's scared to move forward, right? And that's the exact issue here, is you want to appeal to the logical rider, right? But the rider determines ways, your logical mind, determines ways to make sure that the emotional elephant is motivated to move forward, even if it's feeling lazy, even if it's feeling scared. That's really how you, the, the science of behavior change comes down to exactly this, right? How do you get the elephant to move forward and do what the writer wants, despite the elephant not wanting to do it. If, you can, if you're able to figure this out, right? If you're able to figure out how to make sure that your emotional mind is in uh, alignment with the goals of your logical mind, you're, you're gonna be unstoppable. You will accomplish anything and everything you want in life. It's absolutely amazing. I've done this for my own business uh, to, to really help scale it up over the past few months. Um, I've helped this with the guys that uh, myself and my business partner, Josh Reef, uh, help with, with guys in their dating lives. Um, this is kind of the, the uh, basically what Jonathan Haidt explains in his book, The Happiness Hypothesis, which is expanded upon in the book Switch by uh, Chip and Dan Heath, which I just talked about a little bit earlier, okay? So now I want to give you kind of an expanded version of this. Uh, that I think is an easier, really just kind of puts into perspective uh, and makes it an easier way to understand behavior change and all the intricacies behind it. Okay, so here is the expanded version, the Kevin version of uh, the elephant and the rider analogy. I, I'm a little bit hard-headed. I kind of have a thick skull, so sometimes you need to over-explain things for me to understand it. And I think that's the best way to teach, too. So let's expand upon this. So you have the elephant and the rider here, right? So imagine in this scenario that there's a river that the elephant needs to cross. On the other side of the river is everything the elephant's ever wanted. Right? There's a whole bunch of trees with bananas. There's a beautiful female elephant calling over to your elephant saying, hey, come here, right? The logical rider over here, there's a whole bunch of cool people that he wants to hang out with, right? Everything that you, the logical rider and your emotional mind 
ever want in life is on the other side of this river. But what's the issue? The elephant is terrified of the river. It's absolutely terrified to go across the river, even though it knows it's what that's what it's best for. That, that's what's uh, best for the elephant, right? You as the rider, you can only go across the river with the help of the elephant, right? You can't just swim across. You can't just abandon your elephant. The only way to go across is to use the power of the elephant to go across the river. The elephant's fully capable of doing it if it has the right guidance, if it has the right path to go along, right? Because part of the reason that it's scared is because it's facing something it's never done before. It's never swam across a river like that before, right? But who comes to the rescue is another guy with his elephant. And his elephant isn't scared because he's done it before. This elephant's built a little bit differently. <laughs> um, but this guy has gone across before and he tells you and your elephant say, hey, listen, I can guarantee you safe passage through this river. It's okay, elephant, you can do it, right? And to demonstrate, this guy goes across the river and comes back and shows the elephant, hey, it's actually possible. But even still, even with that, even with all of the motivation here of all of the cool things that the elephant can possibly have, even with proof, that and other elephants can do it, and ele other elephants have done it, even offering help to do it for free, uh, the elephant still doesn't move. It still doesn't do it. And you as a logical rider are frustrated because you know, you know logically this is what's best for both of you. You want to go on the other side, but the elephant refuses to do so because it's scared. So how? This is the crux, this is at the heart of behavior change and how you actually change your life, right? How do you get the elephant to go across the river? That is the million dollar question. If you can answer this question, right, your entire life will change, okay? Because you as a logical person watching this right now, you know what you want. You know how much you want to make in your business. You know uh, how much success that you want to have with women. You know that you want to become a fit person. You want to change your life, right? You know that. That's why you're watching this, okay? But your emotional mind knows that too, but still doesn't do it because it's scared. So what do you do? Because here's the thing. The reality of the human condition is we are more driven by avoiding fear than we are seeking pleasure. This is everything pleasurable on this side that the elephant could ever possibly want, right? But despite that, the fear of this river paralyzes it to the point where uh, it doesn't matter, right? So you can appeal to the elephant all day saying, hey, look how great this other side is. Look, it's possible. Look at this other guy here. It's possible to go across the river, right? We have a guide to help us go across the river. But even so, because it's so terrified of the river here, it doesn't move anyway. So that frustrates you as the rider. So you as a logical rider, this is, this is the time to put your thinking caps on, right? How do you use your logic to spur along your emotional mind to go through and do what's necessary to get what you both actually want? Here's how you do it. You have to make the fear of staying where you currently are much more significant than the fear that comes along with changing to better your life. That's where it, well, that's what it comes down to in a nutshell, okay? So how do you do that? How do you strategize as a logical writer to make sure that uh, it's in the emotional elephant's best interest to go across and it's forced to go across? Create more pain. Make the pain of this is this is where it gets kind of tough, but this is listen I'm not here to just make you feel good. This is just the reality of how the human brain works And if you're watching this And you're not where you're at with, with with your life or whatever you're trying to achieve in your life. This is the reason why okay You need to put more pain in your life <laughs> I'm just being blunt here, but Here's the thing. Here's what you can do as a logical rider, okay? Now you, as a logical writer, you're smart. You can strategize on how to make this happen. Now, there's this amazing thing that man discovered back in our caveman days called fire, right? So you're smart, so you say, listen, 
I am going to set fire to this entire side here, right? This side's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's, it's not, the, not the greatest. You're always looking over to the other side, seeing how much better life can be. But this side of mediocrity is just good enough. It's just good enough. You know, you've got, you, you got a few uh, bananas you can eat every once in a while. There's not a plethora of bananas. There's not a whole lot of cool people here. There's not a whole bunch of beautiful elephants there, right? But it's enough. It's enough for you to just feel comfortable, right? Because if this side really sucked, like you were starving, it was terrible, or if it was on fire, you would be like, you know what? This side sucks so bad, I'm just gonna suck it up, go through here, and get to the other side anyway. Okay, that's why a lot of people who become super successful, uh, a lot of times they come from poverty, right? Because like everything sucked so badly that it didn't suck nearly as much to stay where they were than, or I, I sh I'm sorry, uh, going through the pain and the suckage of trying to change their lives wasn't nearly as painful as staying where they currently were, right? But the reality is in the first world uh, lives that we mostly live, if you're watching this, um, life is just good enough for you to just be complacent here and not uh, go across the river to what you really want. So what you have to do is structure your environment to force that to happen. So how do you do that? You set a fire to this side, right? If you set a fire to this side and the elephant and you know that unless you follow this guy across the river, you're going to burn to death and you're going to die, right? And I don't know about you, but dying or burning, let's say, or getting burned alive is uh, much more painful than having to go across a river to go to where you really want to go, okay? So the key, the key to behavior change is figuring out what this fire is. This fire that forces you to face your fears because getting burned by the fire is going to be much scarier and much more painful than going across the river that you're scared of. If you're able to figure out what this fire is, what drives you personally, you can accomplish anything, absolutely anything. Now let's be honest, what's the fire for most people? It's embarrassment, it's losing social status, it's losing something that you worked hard for. What is something that we've all worked hard for that we cherish and value, right? The key word is value there. How do we quantify value? Money, <laughs> okay, money. For most people, not everyone, for most people this fire is money. Money. Your emotional elephant understands money very well, okay? If you have a thousand dollars, let's 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 take a, a real life scenario, okay? Let's go let's get out of elephant analogy world for a second. So for example, right, um, like I said before, I teach guys uh, how to be more successful with women. That's, that's the route that I'm going down right now uh, within the realm of men's self-improvement. That's the, that's the biggest thing that I deal with with my clients, okay? So let's take a scenario where I'm out at a bar with a client and the client is really terrified of something that we call approach anxiety. So um, just walking up to a girl and saying hi it's paralyzing. The emotional elephant can't go there, right? There's that beautiful girl on the other side, but then there's like this invisible barrier between him and the girl that he wants to talk to. And that's, that's the river there that he's afraid to cross, okay? So how do I make sure and ensure, I can say with 100% guarantee that I can do something in that moment <laughs> that forces him to go talk to her, okay? It's basically this, I say, all right, Listen, this is gonna sound like a personal question, but I'm your coach so I can ask it. How much money is in your bank account? And let's say he says $2,000, okay. All right, so if you don't go talk to her right now, uh, you're going to wire me $2,000. This is me coaching you here, this is why you hired me. You signed an agreement beforehand saying that I can do whatever I want here to make you, to get your result, okay? So if he doesn't go approach that girl, he loses his life savings, all right? Do you think he's going to go at least approach her now? You bet your freaking ass he is, <laughs> okay, right? Now, am I saying to sink your life savings into whatever it takes to uh, get a result? No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is find what you value. 
what you value and what you hate to lose to make sure that you go across that river, okay? And for a lot of people, for most people, it's money, right? The only, for the only people that the, the biggest thing that they're afraid to lose isn't money are people who are already super rich, okay? If you're a millionaire, if you're a billionaire, you're more uh, concerned about your social reputation at that point because, um, you know, you just have more money than you know what to do with. So for example, um, Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, he recently, um, you know, pledged one third of his net worth to coronavirus relief, right? Which is amazing and should be commended. That's, that's, a, that's an amazing thing that should be encouraged for rich people to do, absolutely. But at the same time, it's easier for him to do that because the money that's left over is still more money than he could ever use in a lifetime. But if you're an average person, if you're middle class, if you're lower class, if you're even upper middle class or upper class even, you still probably value money a lot more than a billionaire does, right? This is why you might be seeing a lot, a lot, a whole lot of free advice on YouTube. You might get free tips from experts from time to time from, from this uh, expert elephant rider. But typically, you don't cross the river anyway, right? Because even though you hear these tips, the, the logical rider knows the path to get to this side. It doesn't do anything to the elephant. The elephant's still scared regardless, right? So this is what it comes down to, guys. If you could figure out the fire, the fire that drives you, the fire that is so scary that it forces you to move forward, that is the key to everything. And for most people, it's money. Now, like I said before, is it, um, is it you spending your life savings? No, but if you should be spending a pretty scary amount, man, you should, because that's what drives you to action. This is why when you do stuff for free and you take free information that doesn't, that motivates the rider, the rider's already motivated. It doesn't do shit for the elephant. The elephant's not motivated at all. Okay. So it's important that you put a certain amount of money down to what you value to go across, right? It's like when you buy a house and you have a mortgage, okay? You're going to be so much more motivated to uh, work harder at work, to not lose your job, because if you lose your job, then you're uh, sacrificing money here, <laughs> okay? and you won't be able to pay for the house anymore. That's the fire. The fire, the, 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 the reason that you get up to go to your shitty job at work that you don't like every single day and go across this river, even though you hate it, is because the pain of losing your home, the pain of losing uh, your livelihood, going bankrupt, the pain of social embarrassment that comes with that is significantly greater than the pain that it takes to go to work, slave away for eight hours and then come back home, okay? This is assuming that you don't like your job. So similarly, if you want to become successful with women, if you want to become a successful entrepreneur, if you want to be successful in fitness, you need to make sure that you're setting fire to this side here so that the elephant has no choice but to go forward, right? This is how humans work. We are fundamentally emotional creatures, way more than we are logical, all right? And because of that, we need to appeal to the elephant and also we are way more driven by avoiding pain than we are towards seeking pleasure it's okay to motivate the elephant to want to go to this side but at the end of the day if there isn't some pain if there isn't a fire lit under your ass or reason to go do it you're not going to do it your, your logical rider is going to do it a lot of people their solution is just to whip the elephant more and more and more and say go 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 but the elephant's still scared regardless, it doesn't work. What you have to do is scare the elephant in a different way to move forward. That's how it works, guys, okay? So now that uh, I kind of explained all that, let's take some real life examples of how this works in action. Okay, so let's go over some practical examples of how this actually plays out in real life, okay? So let's take the, uh, let's take a billionaire, for example. Mr. Jeff Bezos, everyone knows who that guy is, richest man in the world. Let's say, let's say, Jeff, you need to donate $50 billion to this coronavirus cause. And Jeff Bezos, knowing who he is, will probably say F you. Absolutely not. And I wouldn't blame him. But 
And again, this is what works. This isn't ethical. This part here, you can do it in an ethical way. If you have a good coach, they're gonna do it in an ethical way. All right, and this is how I teach all my clients. This is how I get them to get from point A to point B. And this is how any good coach would do it, all right? So he would say, F you, right? F you, I don't, I, I, I care about the coronavirus people, but, uh, and, and providing aid, but I'm not gonna give $50 billion. So then I say, okay, okay, bro. I hacked your phone. I had pictures of you dressing up like a girl, half naked, and, uh, and, and I don't know, shooting a person at the same time. I'm just assuming Jeff Bezos isn't the nicest person and he would do stuff like this. I don't know if he actually would, but I have a speculation it's possible, okay? Um, it's okay, I can say these things. I know Jeff Bezos is never gonna watch this. All right, so that being said, him, he's already super rich. He's already super rich. He's not going to be driven by money. He's gonna be driven by embarrassment and lower status. And because I make that threat, the, the pain that's involved with this threat coming to fruition with the public knowing that and him being publicly embarrassed in that way, he values that more than $50 billion, right? For someone who's not even worth a million dollars, if I say, hey, you need to give me $50 billion, go into massive amounts of debt, somehow find the money, right? You're, that's not even possible for you and that's gonna be so painful. You're gonna have to work your entire life to try to do that. It still probably won't even come close. Because of that, you might just be like, dude, that's not gonna happen. I guess you just have to send those pictures out to the internet. It's gonna ruin my life, it's gonna suck, but I have no choice. But for him, he does have a choice, right? And he could always make that money back because he's Jeff Bezos and he's the CEO of Amazon. So you bet your ass, if I have something like that, uh, because the pain of this embarrassment is gonna be significantly more than the loss of $50 billion, he's going to donate those $50 billion to coronavirus relief, okay? So that's a drastic example, just to go to show you that the fire that you set to this side to get the elephant to move forward isn't always going to be, um, you know, just money. It could be embarrassment, it could be lower status, it could be a mix of all three, okay? But for the vast majority of us guys, unless you're a millionaire or billionaire, the biggest thing that you're gonna be scared of to lose is the value of money, okay? Now, when you're investing into a coaching program, uh, let's say it's a B2B thing, you're hiring a business coach, obviously you're putting this money at stake and then you're hoping that you earn it back, right? But what about B2C, like business to client type relations, right? I would like to imagine that more so as like a car buying scenario, right? So the thing is, is when you're spending money, it's you're investing it, you're not, you're not burning it, so to speak, right? Even though that might be what is implied with this analogy here, it's more so when you put out a certain amount of money, do you get the same amount of value back, right? And what is that value worth? So for example, if I say, hey, I wanna sell you a car for $50,000, you might be like, dude, I'm not spending $50,000 on a car, that's a rip off, right? But when you hear that the car that I'm trying to sell you is a Lamborghini, which is worth $300,000, $50,000 is a hell of a deal. Right, <laughs> but even so, if you're putting out that fifty thousand dollars, you're still going to value that Lamborghini because you know you still put a lot of money into it, right? So when you're finding a coaching program and you're finding a coach, it's important to make sure that you are putting something of value down, right? AKA money, right? That's why, like. And other coaches, feel free to chip in here if you watch this video. You know, there's so many people that come to me for free advice. I've been doing this for eight years now. I've been a personal trainer for seven years um, and really more so within this self-development space for about two years now, uh, more officially. And dude, I can tell you, I've trained hundreds of people. There is only one guy ever who took free advice and actually implemented it in his life for good. And actually, I take that back because it was a free advice. He trained with me for, he paid me, trained with me for uh, about three months and then after that he set out on his own, right? And um, the vast majority of people when they do that, because you can't learn all of fitness in three months, um, well, I mean, technically you could if, you, if your life revolves around it, but uh, most people who do that, they end up falling off. He was the one person who actually took what I said after he paid me and, and continued on the rest of his life. So that's pretty cool. 
So actually, I take that back. There has never been anyone where I gave free advice to that they ended up killing it in the thing they asked advice for. Never, okay? Because they're appealing to the logical rider, but the emotional elephant still isn't motivated to move forward, okay? It's not motivated enough, I should say, All right? So in a scenario where in the field that I'm in, if you have uh, a person here who wants to become better with women, but he's scared to approach, he doesn't know what to do, he needs a guide who knows what to do, AKA me, the coach, or any other coach, to guide him across the river, right? Both of our logical minds are in sync. We, we, we're both talking to each other. We both know what we want. My emotional mind has already been through the whole experience of going to the river. I know the path to get there, okay? His elephant is scared, doesn't know the path to get there. His elephant wants to follow my elephant, but is paralyzed and can't. So the way to make sure that that elephant follows through is to put something at stake. Money, something that it values, right? Because here's the thing, again, with, with the whole thing with the Lamborghini and, and, and all that, it's not just the absolute amount of money. It's more so about what does the money that I put in get me back in return? Because you're not afraid of losing money on a coach. What you're afraid of is you not getting your value back for the money that you put in. There's a very big difference there, right? Because what it comes down to is how much do you value, in, in this scenario, how much do you value women? How much do you value meeting the girl of your dreams? Right? Is meeting the girl of your dreams worth at least, I don't know, $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, a million dollars, right? That's up to you to decide, right? Because it's relative to each person. But as long as you trust the rider, because you've seen the rider go across, the, the other rider, I should say, you've seen your coach go across the river, come back, show you that it can be done, which gives belief in the rider, you, the rider, the logical mind, it helps ensure in the elephant's mind that, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about, but I'm scared, I don't know how to go forward, but I wanna do it. So everyone's on board knowing that if you follow the coach to go across the river, he's gonna take you to the promised land to meet that dream girl of yours, right? But what actually drives you to action instead of just um, to, to actually go there, to, to have your elephant face the fear of going across the river? Because again, if the elephant's not motivated, it's not gonna go forward, it doesn't matter. You're never gonna go across no matter how motivated you try to convince yourself to become, right? It's by putting something at stake. It's by putting money in. Seriously. Dude, I've had uh, clients in the past who are millionaires who paid me um, a good chunk of money, but relative to their net worth, it wasn't that much, so they didn't see that many great results. I've had other people who uh, make a middle-class income or even lower-class income who pay the same amount as my rich clients, and you bet your ass they're the best clients I ever had because they had so much at stake here. They had so much at stake. You have to burn the bridges behind you, or burn the, burn the boats, I should say. Burn the boats behind you so that the only way to succeed is to move forward. It's scary. It's scary to put money down that, um, you know, that's something that is expensive, right? Whatever that might be, whether it's my coaching program or another one, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's expensive. What it matters is, is it, is it freaking worth it, right? If you put $100 in, for example, do you get $10,000 worth of value back? What is this worth to you? What is getting to the other side worth to you? It, it, if it's worth so much more than what you have to put in to get your elephant to move forward, to motivate your elephant to move forward, if it's worth so much more than that, then you have your answer, man. It's a no-brainer to pay that money to a coach, to pay that money to a program, to hold yourself accountable to get there. That's what it's all about. I hope this video made sense. Um, I've been working on this analogy for a long time or expanding upon an analogy that already existed. Uh, let me know your opinions on it and feel free to share this with your coach. Um, 
if you're a trainer of any kind, uh, feel free to share this with your clients because um, I just, I think so many people are just, they just don't understand how to change, <laughs> right? And for me as a hard case, as someone who used to be uh, just such an introvert and um, someone who is just afraid of people, I had to really light a fire under my ass uh, by hiring coaches and things of that sort to actually get me to be good at this stuff. To, for, for, I had to hire business coaches for me to actually uh, take action and do the scary things required in my business, right? Um, another thing too, I had to hire, when I did my, my bodybuilding competition back in the day, my physique competition, I had to hire a coach and pay him money because that was enough accountability and incentive for me to actually not let my money go to waste and do it anyway. That's what it comes down to, man. Hope you found this video uh, helpful and hope you relate. Please share and like. I think this uh, information is valuable to everyone, which is why I'm willing to give it away for free. And um, yeah, just let me know what you think and I will be happy to come up with more whiteboard videos like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this is helpful. Hope this change, changes your life the way it changed mine and the way it changes my clients. And um, I'll see you next time, okay? Have a great rest of your day.